हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर लर्निंग लेसन नंबर सिक्स नेम ऑफ द लेसन इज देयर एनिमल क्लासिफिकेशन एंड इन दिस एनिमल क्लासिफिकेशन वी आर स्टडीड वी आर स्टडिंग सम फाइलम्स एंड इन दैट फर्स्ट फाइलम वी आर स्टडीड ओरिफेरा सेकंड वी आर स्टडीड निडारिया थर्ड वन वी आर स्टडीड प्लेटी हेलमिंतीस फोर्थ वन वी आर स्टडीड अस्क हेलमिंतीस फिफ्थ वन वी आर स्टडीड Anelida. Next, after that we have studied Arthropoda, and after that we are going to study about Mollusca, Mollusca and Echinodermata, Echinodermata. So, before this, some questions are there, and that questions are related to the information, extra information to the Arthropoda. So, first question is there: How the animals from the Arthropoda they are useful? How these are useful? and harmful to the human beings how these animals are useful and harmful to the human beings after that we are going to study uh, in case of the arthropods those which organisms are having or which animals from the arthropoda they are having shorter life span and longer life span and at last we are going to study how these arthropods they are competing with competing with human beings so first of all we'll see how these arthropods are useful and harmful to the human beings so first thing information about arthropoda arthropoda in that usefulness usefulness how these are useful to the human beings to human beings or humans so first thing is that arthropods are useful in the manner of the food arthropods are used as a food first thing is that as a food as a food so in that which animals or which arthropods are eaten in that uh, crab is there crabs again you can say uh, lobsters are there lobsters these animals can be eaten as a food second thing is there another thing is there in case of the arthropods they are useful in another way in that uh, you can say uh, honey bees honey so we get honey from honey bees Bees. Then third one is there. In the third one is there. These are useful as a pollinating agents. These are useful as a pollinating agents. So arthropods are useful as a pollinating agents, and uh, they bring about. They brings bring about. pollination they bring about pollination so these are the points how these uh, arthropods these are useful to the human beings these are useful to the human beings so another thing we are going to study and that one is there how these are harmful to the human beings so usefulness and harmfulness so how these arthropods are harmful so in that first thing is that arthropod bites or uh, bites of these animals bites of these animals is noisons or you can say causing discomfort causing discomfort so you know the which animals are there mosquitoes bed bugs bed bugs second thing is there some arthropods they are carriers of the diseases these are 
carriers of the diseases these are the carriers of the diseases second thing these are the vectors for the diseases in the vectors that means that is pathogens grow in their body in that a mosquito example is there mosquitoes so in their body that pathogens are growing you know more from mosquito dengue malaria so diseases are arising so these are the harmfulness usefulness in that uh, as a food then uh, for honey as a pollinating agents harmful in that uh, bites of these animals causes noisance or uh, it is causing uh, it's noisance or you can say causing discomfort mosquito eater will produce the carriers of the diseases vectors for the or the pathogens are growing in their body pathogens are growing in their body so so next thing is there another point we have to study and that point is life span it is related to the life span so next point we will see it is related to the life span of that particular arthropods in that life span which animal is having shortest life which animal is having longest life that one we are going to study so one <coughs> arthropods in that shortest life span animals with shortest life span and it is from arthropod only arthropod only from arthropod with these points we are studying from arthropod only so first thing is that shortest life span is the shortest life span and that one is there flies flies so their life span is there one day insect you can say it is one day insect it is one day insect and the uh, next thing is there longest life span longest life span in that which animal is there example is there in that uh, animal with longest life span example directly here shortest will give example that directly longest life span in that american lobster American lobster is there and its life span is there near about 100 years 100 years is the life span American lobster so next thing is there we are going to study how these arthropods are competing with or competing with human beings next point is the arthropods are the pods competing with humans are the pods competing with humans in that first thing is there how they are competing with humans first thing is there they compete for agricultural resources second thing is there they are causing some diseases they are causing some diseases they are feeding on our body they are feeding on our body so in that feed on us and uh, causes some diseases Feed on us and causes some diseases. So 
the compete with humans they are sucking our blood they are living on us feed on us and they are competing with us so these are the points related to the arthropods now next phylum we are going to study and that phylum is there phylum mollusca which which phylums we have studied that one one time remember first one is there porifera nidaria platyhelminthes ask helminthes annelida arthropoda and now seventh phylum we are going to study and that one is there mollusca that one is there mollusca so seventh phylum that phylum is there mollusca so why it is called as a mollusca which organisms are there in the mollusca and what are what are their characteristics these points we are going to study so see mollusca phylum seventh phylum is there mollusca so mollusca in that we'll see characteristics one by one characteristics of mollusca so in that uh, first of all i will explain characteristics and then we'll see detail so first thing is that body of this animal is there soft and slimy and that's why it is called as a mollusca body is so soft and slimy that's why it is called as a mollusca or mollusk second thing is that it is the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom second largest phylum in the animal kingdom third characteristic is that these are terrestrial or aquatic these animals are terrestrial or aquatic and uh, most of the animals are they are found in marine water and few are fresh water dwellers next thing is there what type of body these animals are having first thing is there their body is triploblastic having three germinal layers endoderm ectoderm mesoderm again their body is their uselomate non segmented and soft body is there triploblastic uselomate non segmented and soft body and the exception given there snail is bile it is having bilateral symmetry snail is having bilateral symmetry fifth one is there body of these animals is divided into three parts which parts are there head foot and visceral mass body of these animals is divided into three parts head foot and visceral mass now next thing is there next point is there visceral mass is covered with mantle it is having one covering you are saying visceral mass is covered with mantle and that mantle is secreting hard and calcareous cell mantle is secreting hard and calcareous cell s h e w -L, l and uh, this cell is uh, internal external or it may be absent that cell is there internal it may be external some in some animals it is absent and last characteristic is there and that characteristic is there these animals are unisexual that means male and female animals are different separate what are the examples of a mollusca bivalve is there snail is there octopus is there bivalve snail octopus so these are the examples of mollusca so characteristics will write first characteristic is there body is soft and slimy body is soft and uh, slimy so called as mollusk mollusks or mollusca second thing is the This, this is the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom it is second largest phylum in animal kingdom second largest phylum in animal kingdom third point is there 
these animals are terrestrial or aquatic these animals these animals these animals are terrestrial or aquatic in that again most are marine water and a few are fresh water dwellers fresh water dwellers fourth point is there body of this animal is divided into and uh, if, uh, one point remain you can take that point also so body of these animals body of these animals is triploblastic triploblastic again a uh, eucelomet triploblastic is there eucelomet is there again one more thing is there it is a uh, what you can say non segmented and soft eucelomet non segmented and a soft body is triploblastic eucelomet non segmented and soft is there so fifth point is there in the fifth point body is divided into three parts which are the four three four parts body is divided into three parts which three parts are there head foot and uh, visceral mass visceral mass sixth point is there in that again one more thing is there visceral mass is covered with mantle visceral mass visceral mass is covered with mantle mantle means hard coat seventh point is there mantle how it is formed mantle secretes hard calcareous cell hard calcareous cell it will be internal external or absent mantle secretes hard calcareous cell it is internal or external or absent eighth point you can take and that eighth point is there mental in that uh, hard is there it may be external or internal or it is absent in some animals and these animals are unisexual these animals these animals are unisexual unisexual means they are uh, having male and female organisms separately and what are the examples of this phylum examples are there by wall again a lobster also you can take example snail is there octopus is there sorry lobster you cannot take snail and a octopus so by wall snail and octopus these are the examples and in in that uh, you can draw the diagram of octopus so like this way body will be there and here bodies like this way what you can say you can show like this way octopus your space is less but uh, you can show like this Eyes. 
again uh, you can take a siphon here siphon yes i p h o n siphon after that uh, you can take tentacles are there these are the tentacles these are tentacles 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 are there another thing is there suckers are there So like this way you can draw that particular and here you can draw eyes only. So these are this one is the what you can say octopus diagram of octopus. Now after this one more time we'll uh, repeat this one. First thing is their body is soft slimy so called as mollusk. It is the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom. Third one is there. These are terrestrial or aquatic, most are marine water, few are fresh water dweller. Body of these animals is triploblastic, eucelomid and non-segmented soft. Body is divided into three parts, head, foot, head, foot and visceral mass. Visceral mass is covered with mantle. Mantle secretes hard calcareous cell and that it is, it may be internal, external or absent. And animals are unisexual and examples are there bival again you can take snail and octopus these are the examples now some extra information about octopus we are going to study which speciality that octopus is having so that one we'll see <coughs> octopus so in case of uh, octopus extra information about octopus about octopus so in that octopus is what type of animal it is a what you can say um, it is the mollusca soft body is there and it is most clever animal it is most clever animal why it is clever animal most clever animal in non cordative you can say it can change its color during when enemy will reach at that time it is changing the color the next one is there it is doing locomotion three types of locomotion it is showing first one is there swimming creeping and walking so which factor are there first thing is there octopus is most clever animal octopus is most clever animal most clever animal in non chordates second thing it can change or it changes its color during emergency during emergency it is uh, giving out ink so it is making water dirty so their predators cannot catch them next thing is the next part is that it is showing three types of motion three types of motions which three types of motion it is showing First one is there swimming. Second one is there creeping. And the third one is there swimming, creeping. And last one, third one is there walking. This movement it is showing. So next phylum we have to study, and that one is the eighth phylum, Echinodermata next phylum after this we are going to study and that one is the echinodermata so why they are called as echinodermata 
You have to remember reasons, specific one one lines you have to remember. Why these animals are called as a mollusca, why these are called as a kind of dermata, why these are called as a um, arthropoda. Like this way you have to remember. So mollusca, we have seen bodies they are soft and slimy, that's why these are called as a mollusca. Mollusca in Marathi also you can say skin is there. In Marathi, Murdu you are saying, Murdu, Mau, Mau, Murdu. So, state phylum of the study, and that one is the phylum echinodermata. Phylum echinodermata. Now, echino means spines. Dermata means skin. So spines are there on their skin. That's why they are called as echinodermata. They are called as echinodermata. So for point wise we'll see which are the characteristics or points related to the echinodermata. Characteristics. Which characteristic they are showing? First character is the calculus, calcareous spines are there present on their body so they are called as a echinodermata calcareous like that of calcium carbonates hard spines are there on their body so called as a echinodermata second thing is that they are found only in ocean third thing is their body of this animal is a triploblastic eusolomate body is a triploblastic and eusolomate fourth point is related to the symmetry so echinodermata they are showing radial symmetry many axis of symmetry but uh, early stages that means they are showing bilateral symmetry during the larval stage during the larva stage they are showing bilateral symmetry again uh, next point is related to the tube feet so tube feet are there and that tube feet are used for the locomotion and for catching their prey. Sixth point is there in that some animals are sedentary. Sedentary means stable. They are not moving. They are not showing any locomotion. Next point is the skeleton. That means outermost covering. What type of skeleton they are having inside. Okay. So calcareous spines are there and uh, or ossicles or plates are there. Spines or plates are there. And in that, next thing is there, they are having good ability of regeneration. These animals are having good ability of regeneration. And uh, mostly, these animals are unisexual. And examples are there, starfish is there. Again, uh, you can say sea urchin is there, brittle star is there, sea cucumber is there. Sea urchin, sea cucumber. Again, a starfish, brittle star. So these are the examples. So one by one characteristics we write. Uh, calcareous spines are present on the body. Calcareous spines are present on the body. Present on the body. So called as echinodermata echinodermata second point is there which is second point these are found mainly in ocean they are found they are found only in ocean third point is there third point is there these are having triploblastic and eusolomate body. So body is body is triploblastic and a eusolomate. Triploblastic and eusolomate. Fourth point is their symmetry. Radial symmetry they are having, but uh, during the larval stage they are showing bilateral symmetry. So in that uh, 
Fourth point is they are related to the symmetry. So these animals, these animals show radial symmetry. Radial symmetry. But during larval stage, during larval stage, shows bilateral symmetry. During larval stage, shows bilateral symmetry. Fifth point is there to fit. It is related to the tube feet. They are having tube feet. But for what purpose they are used? Tube feet. They are used for locomotion and for catching the prey. For locomotion and catching prey. Locomotion and catching prey. Sixth point is there some animals are there sedentary in nature. Some animals some animals are sedentary. Stable you can say sedentary or stable. They are not showing any movement. Seventh point is there and that point is related to the skeleton. So skeleton is there calcareous spines or vesicles or plates. Skeleton calcareous spines or vesicles. Yes, CI ossicles. You can say uh, they are having ossicles. Whatever yes, SI ossicles. They are having ossicles, or you can say plates. They are having plates. Ossicles or plates. Eighth point is there. That means skeleton is there. Calcareous spines or plates are there. Ossicles are there. Plates are there. They are having good ability of regeneration. At point is there good ability of regeneration. And uh, last point is that we'll take one more more character. We'll take mostly mostly these are unisexual. Uh, examples are there uh, in case of uh, echinodermata starfish is there sea urchin is there bitter star is there sea cucumber is there starfish sea urchin sea urchin sea cucumber is there And uh, one more sea urchin, sea cucumber is there. And one more example is there, and that one is there. Brittle star, you can take. Brittle star. Brittle star. So, diagram you can draw from the textbook. Like this way, diagram will be there. So, in this. Starfish. So body is there, radially symmetrical body is there. And one more thing, uh, before this we'll see, we'll revise these points. Body is having calcareous spines present on the body, so called echinodermata. They are found only in ocean. Body is triploblastic eucelomate. Symmetry, they are showing radial symmetry, but larval stage they are showing 
bilateral symmetry to fit for locomotion and catching prey. Some are sedentary, stable, they are not moving. Skeleton, calcareous, spines or ossicles, plates are there. Good ability of regeneration. Most are unisexual. And examples are the starfish, sea cucumber, sea urchin, brittle star, and the starfish. These are the examples. So, brittle star is the sea urchin, sea cucumber. So, another thing is the most important thing about. Uh, starfish we have to study and that one is there during certain situations star crease starfish breaks and its body part into body parts and it regenerates again so important fact do you know in that on the last point we'll see and the next points we'll see in next video last point is there do you know In that first one is there during emergency starfish breaks up its body and during emergency starfish breaks up its body and a uh, that parts that parts regenerates that parts regenerates as a starfish this is important thing do you know in that regeneration regeneration property as a starfish later on okay so Next phylum, where we are going to study hemichordata is there and chordata is there. That two phylums we will study in next video.